right? Um, we all know, uh, you know, uh, you must be wondering why are we talking about 5G or why anyone should be even uh, looking at 5G or trying to, you know, understand. Um, um, or you might wonder that, you know, everybody is talking about 5G. So uh, what is that, you know, uh, we should be talking about, right? You, 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 uh, you can Google and you'll find tons of material on, on 5G, right? So this is not a technical primer, right? Um, today we'll not be delving too much into the technical aspects of, of 5G, right? A lot of material is already available. We have books, videos, and, and what else. I think the aim, as I said, will be to decipher uh, 5G, right? Just demystify 5G in, in a very simple terms and, and understand uh, uh, or, or come up with the framework or approach to look at 5G or a, or a very high level perspective of what a 5G is and, and use that framework or approach to make sense of all the wilderness that we have out there, right? In terms of 5G. You know, I work for Qualcomm and, and you know, uh, we have a very bright engineers coming from all over and uh, quite well versed with what's happening in, in technology space, right? But if they have not looked into 5G, you would see that even them, uh, you know, even they are somewhere uh, missing out some picture of it. So, so the aim for us today is to just uh, drill down the understanding of 5G to a, a basic common minimum understanding, which makes sense for all of us. Right, and uh, with that foundation, we will then subsequently, if we get an opportunity to get together, we'll certainly talk about uh, how AIML uh, is going to be used in 5G, or uh, how uh, 5G can enable uh, or magnify the opportunities that AIML brings in. Right. Okay. So with that, let me start from the, the very basic. Right. I guess uh, all of us uh, who have looked at uh, a cellular network at, at any given point of time uh, will be familiar with this um, uh, with this diagram, right? On one hand, we have a, a, or a typical cellular network, if you see, on one hand, you will have a user equipment, right? And the user equipment, shape, nature, use, and all have evolved over a period of time. Uh, and uh, this is pre predominantly uh, uh, you could you could look at user equipment in in a very different uh, uh, you can consider this uh, that it comes in a very different form and factors and all that right you would have phones of course this is the the main uh, form factor but then you also have uh, you know dongles and then you go beyond that now you will see a lot more other uh, machines and devices using that so we will consider all of that as as uh, as user equipment. Then we have the base station, right? And that's basically the, the entity which brings in the connectivity uh, or enables the connectivity with the user equipment. And how they communicate is, is over the air interface and, and uh, you know, the, the language that they, both of these entities talk is considered to be a radio access technology, right? Or in short, uh, RAT. Um, and that's the own, pretty much the main wireless aspect of it, right? In any wireless communication, I think the main portion which is wireless is this this particular thing, which is the air interface, which is between the user equipment and the base station, which is the towers that we see all around. So these are the two entities which everybody is familiar with, right? Um, you would have seen tower, and then we we you would have obviously used the phones or user equipment, and then there is. Um, uh, uh, a core network, um, basically, which is connected to the base station. And that's, you can say, is the basic uh, uh, mind and, and engine behind the whole network, right? And this is the entity which basically takes care of your billings, your authorizations, your access stuff, moving the data around, security, and enabling the, the, the connection from your user equipment to the external network, right, which is the big World Wide Web. Right, so that's predominantly uh, the the architecture of a cellular network, and whether it's it's 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G, whatever is you know generation it is, I think this is the fundamental uh, you know the architecture for each of these, right? 
And we will come back and refer to this diagram when we you know, um, refer each or discuss about individual aspects. Um, <clears throat> now, when we talk about evolution of a network uh, or, or we talk about 1G or 2Gs and 3Gs and all, we are typically talking about evolution of this network, right? So we all have seen that the cellular world has moved from 1G. Uh, of course, uh, I am not old enough, uh, or, or maybe uh, I won't say that, but yeah, we have, I have seen a very little uh, um, of 1G, right? In fact, I've seen it only in movies, right? When in 80s, when I was watching a movie in which one of the movie star was singing a song and was, you know, uh, singing a song over a phone in the car and the heroine was listening to uh, the song over the other end and I was very surprised at how can a movie car have a phone but that was 1G right um, what did it bring in it bring in basically uh, mobility right that was the first time when um, a, a phone or mobility aspect was added to a phone right and of course, it was basically an analog uh, network. Um, that was early in, in uh, that was a 1980 decade, right? Uh, the whole thing wherein the world tasted the uh, wireless communication for the first time, and we're very happy with the mobility aspects. And the underlying technology there was amps and NMTs and whatever it is, right? But they're all typically analog, all about voice calls. All right. So what are we doing uh, uh, in this slide is basically, or uh, in the next couple of minutes is to, to look at each of these generations, that evolution, and look at what is the key value proposition that each of these is trying to bring in, right? And finally, we'll look at what is the key value proposition a 5G network is providing, right? So we'll go one by one and, and look at each value proposition, see how the value proposition that each network is providing has evolved. All right, so we talked about 1G, which is primarily voice. Uh, it was very uh, rudimentary analog technology and it gave the mobility aspect. And a lot of people like me were very surprised and were gung-ho about, wow, you could talk when you're moving around and not at home. Then 2G came in 90s, uh, wherein, uh, you know, uh, uh, it was uh, a digital voice. Uh, what that meant at that moment was that it was, uh, more clarity and um, you know it was a better technology um, it also provided what you call as roaming right uh, it, it was the first time when the uh, when the users could move much more beyond than just their house or their their local regions right um, they could move beyond uh, the image cell tower circ uh, circles and all that. So mobility, uh, roaming was was the key, uh, the other key value proposition that it brought in. Now also with each of these value, uh, each of these evolution, uh, evolutionary technologies, uh, from a user perspective, it was clearer voice and mobility, right? But remember, uh, from operator perspective, um, uh, the they look at some other value propositions as well, right? Because uh, operators pay for spectrum, which is fixed resource, and they would like to maximize the use of it. And how they can get more and more benefit out of the same spectrum is by ensuring that more and more uh, uh, users are, are using that at the same time, which means the capacity should increase. So between 1G and 2G, the other value proposition was more capacity, right? Which means uh, on the same bandwidth that uh, that uh, an operator has, they could support more number of simultaneous calls at the t at the t at the same time. So between 1G and 2G, it was a digital voice, which is more clear, right, and uh, more robust, and uh, roaming was added to it. And nine, if you remember, 90s was also an era or I'm sure uh, many of you have not seen previous uh, uh, centuries, so you may not be aware, but 90s was the era wherein the internet boom started, right? And, and uh, uh, that was the time wherein the wired internet was, you know, uh, spreading very fast. In India also, we saw that, you know, um, 
the the uh, you know the spread of internet or internet internet was introduced in india in, in 90s and then you know that's how for the common people uh, and and that's how it started spreading and all that and that was a time when it was felt that you know there there is a need for data on the uh, wireless communication as well um, and uh, in 1992 or, or around that time was the first time when an internet packet was uh, was transferred uh, between a, a device and uh, a base station and the network by the uh, by using the wireless network and uh, qualcomm was the was the company who who did that first time uh, in the world right and qualcomm demonstrated the um that the internet uh, the data packet can actually be transferred uh, from a wireless device uh, from a device to the base station on core network wirelessly so that led to some intermediate solutions in 2G network, which is uh, what we call as 2.5G, which is GPRS and uh, 3G, which was, uh, sorry, 2.75G, which was edge. And um, if you look at 1G, uh, if you look at 2G, I think the internet speeds were like in the range of, uh, you know, a few kbps, 2.5, uh, G, uh, G brought in speeds in the range of 40 kbps to about 100, 300 kbps, and 2.75 G, which is the edge, brought the speeds up to 500 kbps, and and it was it was a big thing, and and uh, you know uh, a good value proposition that 2G evolutionary networks brought in. So what it meant for uh, for uh, users, right? You would see that the first time users would be able to download ringtones and you would be, uh, if you have not seen that era, you would be surprised that, you know, a lot of people were already happy and proud to feel, uh, to see that they have a customized ringtone when their phone is ringing and they, they could actually use the, uh, you know, um, a ringtone which is based on the popular, or, you know, the most favorite song and all that. Um, uh, it was. It meant a very limited amount of data exchanges. You would download very, uh, you know, small data files and and things like that. Uh, not a very uh, very uh, data centric, but still it did some job. Then came 3G in in 2000, right? Which uh, which brought in the major value proposition, which was the mobile broadband, right? Because at that time the gap between uh, uh, wireless network and the wired uh, network was, was huge and 3g was the first time which was uh, which was uh, introduced with data needs in the mind right so for a for a common user the value proposition that it brought in was more more uh, data high speed data and that was the first time when um, when uh, you know people imagined voice call uh, video calls and you know um, uh, multimedia messages and things like that so 3G was was supposed to enable web browsing on phone and you know uh, data exchanges and video calls and watching small media uh, clips like videos and things like that. So it brought the speed uh, up to two megabits per second, right? And of course, from the operator perspective, it certainly brought in more capacity, right? So uh, in all of these evolutionary uh, generations, like 1G to 2G to 3G. And of course, going forward, 4G, the key uh, motivation for operators or, or engineers to introduce newer technologies was to, one, bring in more, more and more data faster, of course, good voice quality, uh, more users, right, capacity. So capacity and the mass, the, the data, uh, uh, increasing the data speed was a key motivation factor. Uh, because that that was the most uh, loved value proposition by users as well as the operators. And we move to f and then of course 3G also brought in global roaming, right? Uh, until 2G, it was very difficult for uh, at that time for for uh, you know a, a user to move from let's say US to Europe um, and um, you know um, still use the same phone and all that. So d global roaming was introduced and 3G. Then came 4G, right? Uh, until 3G, uh, the voice calls were all based on what we call a circuit switched uh, uh, method or technology, right? In which you would have a dedicated uh, uh, routing of the calls, right? So it would basically uh, 
uh, consume resources of, of the network. Um, but then of course, it, it, at that time, since data was very uh, in a nascent stage, uh, it, uh, you know, the, C, the CS calls provided the, the reliability and all of that. When, it come, when we came to 4G, it was uh, primarily a data only call a data only a service right so there was no uh cs calls in in 4g but the voice was also serviced in the form of regular data of course it had its own uh, quality of service requirements and all that but then even the voice calls were then uh, were moving around as as uh, tcp ip packets and, and data right and of course it, it brought in more capacity and higher speed data so that promise that goal was still kept, right? So you had uh, 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 higher capacity, higher speed data, but it also brought in some more features like, like positioning and all that. And uh, if you really look back, each of these additional capabilities has enabled a lot, lot of other services, right? Um, from 3G to 4G when the transition happened, uh, you would have seen that a lot of disruption has already happened, right? And 4G, if you see with the high data speed, with connectivity, with uh, with uh, positioning, uh, you see a lot of industries have got disrupted, right? If I were to ask you uh, to name a couple of industries that 4G technology has disrupted, um, um, I'm sure uh, uh, you would name uh, Auto industry as one of it, right? Or or, or commute industry, right? Wherein, uh, you know, the we have these Ola Ubers and all, you know, which has been, uh, you, you couldn't have imagined the service in the 3G or a prior generation um, world, right? Because even though there was a data connectivity and you know some of the other building blocks were there, but then you could you cannot wait for your uh, location to be determined in in in, a, in in about a minute's time or or, or your map to be downloaded um, you know uh, uh, taking more than uh, a few seconds right so 4g enabled a lot of services uh, and and enabled new business models and, and uh, you know you have you have seen disruptions in the food category wherein you have the uh, the swiggies which have come in or you have uh, uh, disrupted the hotel industry wherein you have the uh, you know, Airbnbs and all that. So all of these, uh, a lot of such things have been enabled. Uh, I'm sure there are a lot of other examples um, been enabled by uh, all the uh, uh, new features that uh, 4G has brought in, right? Which is primarily the, the more data, the faster data, uh, the high capacity, and, and basically uh, a speeds about 100 megabits per second and towards the later revisions of 4G uh, up to one gigabits per second, which is very close to uh, what a, a wired line would offer. All right, so that's so much about uh, the history. Um, uh, as we have seen the evolution for a common man between 1G to 2G to 3G to 4G would typically be basically uh, uh, more data and and better quality of services, right? And then a little bit more features like uh, uh, positioning and all, which has uh, enabled a lot a lot more industry or usage or services. Okay, let's look at what uh, 5G is enabling, right? Or what is the promise of 5G? Why is why is everybody uh, so gung ho about 5G, right? In 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 earlier days when there was a transition from 3G to 4G, there was nobody talking much about 4G is like something like 4G is coming and all that. You would only see that around 2014 when when um, the operators were ready to serve and, and you know, um, and talk about uh, the new services and all, right? But today the world is different. You are seeing the government is trying a, very hard to get 5G services in it. And, and and you know there is um, if you if you had seen that government of India has come out with a challenge on this year to uh, which will uh, and invite you know young entrepreneurs and startup world to come up with services which will be based on 5G features right or 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 which will be based on 5G technologies and they are trying to see that India is not left behind in the 5G space so why is there so much of gung ho about it or 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 in other terms what is that 5G is bringing onto the table, which will 
which will uh, which is create which is generating so much of excitement and enthusiasm right uh, if you look at what has happened between 1g 2g 3g 4g uh, we have looked at some of these uh, foundational features that those technologies brought in right which is was kind of similar at the uh, uh, in the transition but then uh, uh, it's still disrupted by the time we 4g came in it still disrupted a lot of uh, industries so Let's look at what 5G is bringing and, and uh, why there is so much of buzz noise around it. Right? So first thing, which is very similar to what you have seen in the earlier uh, generation evolution, which is a faster data, uh, more capacity and more efficient, efficient use of the, the resources. Right. So, uh, so 5G uh, continues to deliver that promise. And, and we are talking about speeds of 20 Gbps, which is which is almost 20 times what 4G is promising to offer, right? So one of the foundational features that 5G is offering is very similar to the, the uh, what, what previous generations uh, offered, which is, is a faster data, more capacity, more efficiency, right? So 5G is going to uh, take the, F, the, the speed and the efficiency to the next level, right? Uh, almost 20 times of what uh, 4G is offering at the moment. Okay, the next thing that uh, 5G is offering, which was which started to appear in 4G world, but but it came as an afterthought, and and a lot of technologies that started uh, uh, showing up uh, in in the in the previous decade um, uh, was to enable what we call as Internet of Things, right? Or in 3GPP terminology, it's called as machine type communication. So with 5G. Uh, machine type communication is an integral is actually an integral part of the 5g design in 4g it was not there when uh, this requirement was not in the mind when the 4g networks fundamentals were designed it started appearing in in the in 2012 13 14 and all all that time frame wherein people talked about started talking about internet of things connectivities and all that and uh, and they started making some tweaks and you know started bringing in some technologies using whatever was available with 4G uh, uh, techn technical um, bucket. They would pick up some stuff and then basically build a technology that would help or serve this use case or this need, right? Uh, but 5G was designed to support this, right? So there are some fundamental uh, uh, pieces that were brought in in 5G technology to support massive machine type communication. Uh, what, what does it mean is typically if you really, uh, let, let's look at this and then understand why it is, um, why it is uh, you know, so difficult or why is it so important, right? Um, when you look at uh, the design philosophy for previous generations, it was always about serving uh, mainly the smartphone users, the the consumers, which will basically be consuming huge amount of data uh, quickly, right? So it was always about more data, faster speed, right? Versus if you look at ma machine type communication, it is actually exactly opposite. It's not about faster data, right? It's not about a huge amount of data. In fact, it's exactly opposite. It is very limited amount of data in most of the cases. For example, if, if you have a, a device which is uh, placed in the field, um, it will send a, a few kilobytes of data, you know, uh, once in a day or maybe once in four year, four hours or so, right? So it's a exactly opposite requirement. Uh, it's not about huge data, it's less data, less frequent communication, but at the same time, more power. Uh, uh, at the same time, very low power consumption, right? So you need to be having a technology which is giving you a very low power consumption right you cannot expect a farmer to go around uh, in his huge field and change the battery or change the provide the power or imagine if a, if a if a ue or a user equipment is placed deep down somewhere or a very high up in the building you can't expect people to change it so very low power and all that so this is a very exactly opposite requirements and hence there are a lot of technical challenges right you you are you're designing a, a a system which will uh, take care of uh, requirements which are at op extremely opposite ends of the user needs. So that's why 5G is complex, but it promises to have have uh, 
a support for uh, for a very large number of connected devices right uh, you know smartphones users you can expect that you know we are 7 billion humans uh, you know every human will have one or two at max we are still talking about you know what uh, 7 billion connections or 10 billion connections or maybe 12 billion but when we take this to connect uh, every thing around us then the scale is 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 very different right we are talking about one 50 devices today uh, per person which can uh, go to a huge number so the scale is very different so how do you ensure that all these things gets connected uh, without compromising on security and everything else and things like that so it's a very different set of requirements so this is a second foundational feature that that 5g is bringing in and then the third feature that it is bringing in is ultra reliable low latency connectivity right what it means is 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 a, is a very very high reliability now in today when you are downloading or you're doing a video call in your 4g network it's okay if if one or two frames are dropped or you know you have little jittery uh, video or you know your file takes a little longer to download and all that but when we are looking at some of the use cases that 5g is promising you cannot expect a link to go down right so your communication has to be very very reliable right uh, and then the second thing is latency if i, I am sending a, a, a data from my phone to a, a, another a one ue to another ue across the network the time it takes to reach out to the other end should be very minimal right in the order of let's say milliseconds like 20 millisecond or one millisecond or whatever it is but but not in 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 terms of few seconds but in terms of few milliseconds right which is a huge promise and that is again a very very different that again brings in a very different constraints or or, or uh, needs uh, for the technologists who are developing this technology right but uh, these are tall promises and and people are working on getting delivering these promises right so 5g when it is deployed fully you will see that these are the three fundamental or foundational feature sets that uh, you know 5g is offering right so if anyone wa wants to you know ask you a question hey what is 5g the perspective uh, from the from the fundamental or foundational features uh, if you look at it from that perspective then you could define 5g that hey 5g means these three fundamental features by and large right of course you will have few other things that we'll talk about but but by and large these are the three foundational features now when we look at 4g right 4g offered only one of these features which was basically the the faster data speed and you know uh, 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 basically the fast data and and more data right and it disrupted a lot of things now imagine if if a technology is offering all these three features right how much disruptive it could be right nobody knows actually <laughs> when when this whole things were being planned and all you know people had some wild ideas and all that but but when 4g came in right uh, when it was first deployed nobody really had an idea what would be a killer or the disruptive app that you know uh, people will come up with I, I think that is for the ecosystem to develop but uh, but the people who are working to build 5g i think they are offering this these three fundamental features right so if you have to define 5g from from that perspective then this summarizes what 5g is the other way to look at is what are the services that 5g is bringing in right what what kind of uh, new services that people are thinking about it smart cities right we have been hearing about smart cities and again uh, some of these things uh, were there in the 4g world as i said people you know started uh, uh, bringing in some patchworks or some kind of uh, stopgap solutions to enable 4g deliver some of these things uh, and now with 5g it is all fully integrated so smart cities is one of the key application uh, area for for 5g Autonomous driving, I think this is one of the key promise and, and I think uh, we are almost there in that sense, right? If you look at um, uh, this space, I think um, we already have, uh, there are five levels of, uh, you know, autonomousity that, you know, the car manufacturers are defining and five is like fully, fully automatic. And uh, of course, trials are going on for that, but then you already have semi-automatic or 
uh, driver assisted uh, you know uh, driving and things like that so so you already have a lot of uh, of these features already in market today but but 5g is going to take it to the whole level wherein it's fully automatic the communication is 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 uh, between the cars and no human intervention and things like that oops i'm sorry about that there's some okay industrial iot is the other one right uh, uh, we we are looking at uh, very specific needs from industry and and see how uh, this technology can enable the automation and with the covid-19 situation the needs of all of this has really grown multifold right how you could automate a lot of these things how could you do things remotely so industrial iot is, is a very important uh, uh, service that that uh, you know we are looking at uh, to be enabled by 5g augmented reality virtual reality again this is this is a very important field in fact when the first 5g network demo was have, was given uh, the first killer or first impressive uh, use case demo was with respect to augmented reality so we are expecting uh, you know 5g to deliver big on this as well remote driving is again another important one uh, drones uh, driving vehicles in risky areas and things like that and a lot more and this is the the 3g pp uh, sorry this is the imt uh, view of how all of this will fit in right remember the fundamental building blocks we talked about uh, enhanced mobile broadband massive machine type communications and ultra reliable low latency communications these are the three fundamental building blocks which will be used in one way or the other to enable this vision of smart cities autonomous driving industrial iot and all of these use cases that's a huge list um, i just uh, listed a few of them but but uh, the, 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 these three key fundamental features will enable all of this and if you if you really um, if you really see the uh, the this space here uh, right uh, the ultra reliable low latency is going to be enabling the self driving cars the mission critical applications uh, some of the industrial automations and things like that the ultra mobile broadband uh, which is like fast data uh, uh, you know and fast speeds uh, the huge data with fast speeds is going to be uh, useful for 3d videos and you know gaming and augmented reality and things like that and your machine type communications is going to enable uh, visions or services like smart cities and uh, smart home buildings and things like that uh, of course there'll be a, a few overlaps of here and there but the idea here or the key message i'm trying to convey to you is uh, you know if you forget everything else i think the key takeaway from from this discussion today is that you know these are the three fundamental features of 5g which is going to enable everything Thing that you are hearing about, so that's the the key uh, uh, message I want to give here. All right, let's look at the key technical enablers to which are helping achieve those uh, uh, three fundamental features. Right, so uh, I hope you are looking at. Uh, different perspectives how you look at 5g right uh, i mean you depending on whom you are talk talking about you could actually uh, pick up one perspective and start talking about what 5g is right um, uh, uh, or if you're receiving a particular information you can you can see okay well, from which perspective is coming up from okay so uh, coming to key technical enablers i think one of the key uh, as in all as in uh, in previous every uh, technology evolution uh, from 1G to 5G, uh, there's always an improvement in the air interface, right? Uh, which is basically the language between uh, uh, the UE and the tower. So, of course, in 5G, we have a new air interface as well, which is called as NR. You know, the engineers are the most creative people in the world, so they named the new interface as NR, which is new interface, right? So, uh, that's that's why this is named as NR. Um, if you look at uh, previous generations, for example, in LTE, uh, the, uh, in the previous generation, it was called as LTE um, and, and things like that. But anyway, so there is a new in air interface, which is what we looked at in the first slide, uh, which is the, the, the communication uh, method methodology between tower and the UE. And then uh, we have a new 
core network. Right. Um, uh, uh, when we look at new interface, we are talking about support for new bands, new frequencies, you know, the wider bandwidth that's allocated to a, uh, to a UE uh, or an operator. The, uh, we're talking about new numerology. I think we'll talk a little bit about that later. Uh, but, 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 you know, all these aspects are on your interface. When you look at core network, there are a lot of new complex ideas are brought in. Like, for example, the, there is a division of uh, how the control signals go between the UE and the, the network and how the user plane signals go. So there is a separation of the control and the user plane. Until 4G, they were kind of coupled, which means you know, your data and your control uh, communication uh, would go uh, in a similar way. And that brought in a lot of problems. Um, so, so one of the things that 5G is doing and, and towards the end, the 4G also started, uh, you know, the further revisions of 4G also started building those blocks was to separate how the control information goes from UE to the network versus how a data user data uh, information goes from uh, when I say user data, it's typically the, the data like you're downloading a file or your, your video is transmitting. That's mostly the user data versus, uh, you know, uh, how the phone is authenticated or, or what kind of resources are allocated to phone and, and tower for this communication is all control information. So, so that's the separated now. Likewise, we have, um, uh, you know, the, the architecture of the uh, the core network has been changed to what is called a services architecture. There are software defined networks, there's security which is enhanced, and a lot of modularity has been brought in in the in the core network. Let me let me spend a little bit of time. I think we'll we'll have another slide, so we'll we'll talk about that later. But uh, but but uh, there are many many uh, uh, fundamental changes that have gone in the core network to enable those three fundamental features that we talked about. And uh, then you talk. Then you have enhancements in security uh, uh, because we have we are now seeing uh, requirements of enabling billions of of devices, right? So how do you ensure that all of these are connected and secure? And so there's an enhancements on that. Uh, there's an enhancement enhancement in the positioning. Until 4G, we are talking about uh, you know uh, within the range of a meter or two, and now we are looking at the accuracy, uh, much better accuracy. See uh, on a horizontal level, and not just on the horizontal level, but also on the vertical level, you would be able to, you know, tell that a user is in the seventh floor versus the, you know, ground floor, and not just the location. Uh, so higher accuracy of the locations, so all of these are going to come in, and um, uh, also, of course, the coexistence with other technologies like Wi-Fi and uh, you know older technologies and things like that. So, so a lot of fundamental changes are being made in the, in the whole aspects of. Uh, how UE base station and core networks will behave. Okay, uh, let's quickly look at the NR interface changes. Um, I think we are uh, we have about few five or six minutes before I open for the uh, uh, discussion, so we'll move little um, quickly here. So uh, when we look at NR, I think uh, there are uh, there are very important changes. LTE also use what we call as OFDM modulation and NR also uses this, but then there's a lot of optimization has been made. And, and the key reason is that in case of uh, 5G, we have a huge range of bandwidth, uh, a huge range of frequency, which we are going to support, right? Right from 400 megahertz to up to 60 mega, uh, gigahertz is what we are talking about um, supporting, right? So you, uh, up, LTE was supporting only until let's say three gigahertz, uh, gigahertz uh, frequency, but now we are talking about supporting millimeter wave and all of that. So the, the range of frequency support is huge. So you need to be having a, a waveform which is capable of uh, delivering on all these frequencies, right? And then we have seen different kinds of, of needs, right? Which means you're talking about fast data download speed, you're talking about uh, reliability there. And, and so all of these needs uh, different kinds of uh, uh, parameter values to manage this. So you would have to be able to uh, adapt your communication to take care of what the need is, right? So that's why you have a, uh, have a new waveform. And then you also have uh, here, if you see, you also have a flexibility of mixing the, the or, or you're changing the waveform in such a way that you have this portion for, let's say, 
a fast data service and then you have this portion for let's say reliable data service because the way this is configured will be different from this so so you have all these flexibilities which was missing in the previous network and then you also have advanced wireless technologies like uh, mimo uh, which is multi, uh, you know uh, which is based on multiple antennas and sending multiple uh, signals at the same time or, or you know and then you have a, a very robust millimeter wave support and and um, self contained designs etc so a lot of improvements have gone into this so that's all about nr it's a huge topic i think uh, each slide is basically we can spend hours talking about it so i'll i'll probably just introduce uh, uh, or or give you a very high level view uh, that you should have in order to explain it. Uh, let's say you go for an interview to a company and if somebody asks, okay, what do you know about 5G? If you're able to just explain some of these things, I think you have, you have done a pretty good job in answering those questions. Okay, so let's look at the uh, the core architecture. As we just, as I said, there has been a lot of changes that has happened. And, and when I said uh, there is a separation of control uh, versus data, the, I, I would typically mean that, uh, uh, you know, if you have a file getting downloaded from a network, this will follow this path versus if you have, if you are about to connect to a network or if you are getting authenticated on the network, it will follow this path. In the older generations, it would typically follow the same path and then go to the data network. So that's what I was meaning about this. And this basically offers a lot of flexibility and speed uh, improvements and things like that. Now this is basically a new architecture. See the the if you look at the historical uh, architectures, right, from 1G to 4G, you will see that over when the the cellular communication was introduced, everything was very tightly coupled. And if you if you come from computer engineering background, you will know that you know when you write a software, the the, the more modular it is, the better and the more manageable it is, right, for various reasons. I think uh, the cellular uh, architecture are evolving on the same principle and with any generation a lot of modularization have started coming in and 5g has taken it to the very next level right um, uh, 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 it has separated control user plane it has it has come up with the service architecture so you don't really have you know if you look at these two modules they're not tightly coupled and which means the functions are not being called from this here to here directly it's more like okay i need the service and you go to a service discovery uh, module and then you get the service and then interact it. So this brings in a lot of modularity and hence uh, for operators this means a big thing because you're not tied down with one vendor. You know you're, you you can easily uh, bring in reliability because if your one module goes down the other module can be brought up quickly and then you can have redundancy and all that. So a lot of a lot of those uh, uh, the, the the three fundamental features that we talked about are actually you know enabled with some of these these things here. Yeah. Okay, and and you have a lot of these concepts like software-defined networks, edge computing, which means you know a lot of these uh, uh, features you could deploy very close to this. When we talk about, you'll hear a lot about edge computing these days. And when we go to the, uh, when we start talking about AIML and all, we'll see that you know the edge computing plays a big role there. Uh, and what it typically means is that you know uh, edge is like okay, you have a central network somewhere, but then you have a a, a module or, a, or an entity sitting at the edge, which is not a fully functional like this core network, but then it does the, it has enough functionality to deliver what's what it needs to, uh, with respect to reliability and you know uh, and the other features as we discussed. So uh, you you know um, so all these enhancements are being brought brought in through this these, this architecture. All right. Um, the other interesting view that we will see uh, is is basically that we have one network, right? Um, which is your tower supporting multiple devices here. Uh, but each of this, uh, see in the past, it was very difficult for uh, one tower to cater to all the needs, right? Because you would have only one, mecha one, mechan one mechanism, right? Uh, it was not flexible. Until LT, it was not so flexible. But what 5G has brought in is that you could uh, serve the needs of a very diverse set of users. For example, if you are a, if you are an MTC UE, which is a, like a, a very uh, small uh, sense-based device and needs to send a particular data, your communication path will be set up according to your needs and optimized to your needs. Likewise, if there is a a phone which is connected to the same tower 
it will have its own end to end path setup which we call a slice right so you can imagine slice as a very as a as a local work by itself because in order to have ultra reliable low latency you need to configure your network in a very different way then you how you would configure if you have to serve a fast data download speed <coughs> excuse me so the concept of slicing is basically allowing you to do that right so you can imagine a slice as a as a as a full complete network but uh, uh, configured specifically for a particular type of a <coughs> use case or a or a service so this is what 5g is bringing in and what we call as network slicing and this is all enabled uh, through the uh, fundamental concepts like software defined networks and network function virtualization etc <clears throat> and then uh, 5g security i think again um, security has been enhanced a lot to cover uh, both system wide security as well as your functional level security so this is again a very uh, interesting deep topic now when we talk about 5g just like previous generations it's not uh, that everything what we talked about will arrive at the at the day one right it's like you it will be built over 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 a period of time so what we see the current deployments from last year or from this year is basically a deployment of release 15 which is basically primarily about enhanced multimedia broadband right which is a faster data um a huge amount of data in a very short time right which that's primarily what what we are seeing in the release 15 or the current deployment uh release 16 is almost getting frozen and then you will start seeing the getting deployed from next year or so that's when the advanced technologies uh, with respect to cv2x shared spectrum industrial iot in positioning and and ultra reliable low latency and all this will be coming in so today if you are expecting that your first, first generation network will have ultra reliable low latency maybe not maybe it's still not there yet but uh, you know uh, 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 shortly it will be coming in so we'll you'll start seeing some of those applications coming in and all that so you'll have release 16 17 18 that's how i don't know how much you are familiar with 3gpp but but uh, you know all the the 5g uh, like 4g uh, releases were from release 8 to release 14 and 5g is from release 15 to onwards uh, um so that's how 3gpp goes so if you're talking about 3gpp release 8 you're talking about lte or any any release from 8 to 14 you're talking about lte and different releases bring in different features and so if you're talking about 5g you're talking about release 15 and beyond all right so AI ML and 5G I think as I said we'll, we'll talk about it but uh, I just wanted to give you a perspective of uh, 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 you give you these three different a uh, few different perspectives so that when we talk further about some of these you know we have a common language and an understanding about uh, where we are coming from and where it is uh, uh, I'll probably pause here now uh, so that we have few minutes for questions if anyone is interested uh, so Indian uh, over to you and uh, please uh, help me uh, with coordinating this um wonderful uh, nitin first of all uh, you know thank you for taking time and uh, being with us and i think you took us two years ahead it's it was almost like you know uh, back to the future watching the movie we are trying to understand the technology behind how our lives will be looking at um, you know uh, you know in 2021 2022 and i think it's so important for all of us here uh, because uh, as uh, engineering students when we pass out when we graduate uh, you know almost uh, everything that we're going to touch is going to you know have an element of uh, 5g in it and uh, you know thank you for giving us this, uh, um, you know uh, fundamentals and opening our eyes to it um i uh, want to open up this uh, next few minutes uh, for a question and answer session if you can uh send your questions on chat uh you can see nitin sharma you, you can see go to your chat on your uh, zoom window and uh, you can type in your questions directly to nitin sharma if you are watching this uh, live on youtube you can uh, type in your messages on the chat and uh, i will pick up some of the questions from there and uh, share it with nitin sharma as well um 
you can directly go ahead with the, your questions on the chat window, um, which you will see on your Zoom. Okay, I think I see a first question uh, wherein uh, about the frequency of 5G could impact the organisms like birds and animals and all. Okay, so uh, I, I think uh, I would refer to a few studies that have been done and um, I would say that uh, before any technology is in, introduced, uh, there are a few organizations which look at it, right? For example, uh, you would have seen that particular diagram, which was from IMT, which is basically uh, an organization of a, which is a UN body, which is defining what it means by 4G, what it means by 3G, what it means by 5G, right? Which means it defines very important aspects of a particular technology. It gives you the requirement, which means it tells you what is the data speed you have to be. Uh, providing right if any uh, so uh, it, it sets the requirements and then various organizations work to meet these requirements and bring different technologies to the table and say look you have come up with these requirements and my technology meets these requirements hence you can like, if if it's found that that claim is true then that technology is termed as 5g technology right uh, something like that so there is a requirement on power consumption and power emission and, and those kind of things as well defined by IMT. So unless a technology meets those requirements, it will not be classified as uh, 5G. So one way to look at it is that, you know, uh, any deployments that we will see will meet these requirements and hence you, we can be assured that it will not be harmful uh, or it will not be any way different than what we have been seeing in, in previous generations. That's one way to look at it. The second organization is the US organization, FCC. Likewise, we have Indian organizations and all that, which always look at the power emissions and you know all of these things. So uh, we will not uh, uh, get a permission to use uh, 5G unless we meet those requirements. So at this point of time, there is no confirmed study or something which says that, hey, this particular thing is, is actually bad for, for human consumptions and all that. Uh, if 3G, 4G, 2G were all there, 5G actually brings in more power efficiency and uh, an optimization with respect to uh, uh, previous generation technology. So if, if 4G is not bad, then I, I would say 5G is actually better. That's how I would uh, look at it because it supports with the same power same bandwidth it supports much more number of users so you know uh, uh, it, it 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 will have a lot of uh, benefits from that perspective as well okay so um, uh, let me okay there are a lot of questions so i think uh, i need to scroll back to Okay, uh, there's one question which uh, I'm seeing is, what is the frequency, frequency range between 4G and 5G? Okay, so I'll probably rephrase this question a little bit. Uh, 4G supports, uh, you know, bandwidths from, I think 400 megahertz to somewhere around uh, three gigahertz. Uh, 5G supports all of that plus more, right? So you would talk, you would, uh, you would hear about uh, sub six gigahertz deployment, and which typically means 5G, Technology is you deployed in the frequency range of four megahertz to six megahertz, or six gigahertz, and then you are talking about uh, 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 millimeter wave deployments, which typically starts from 24 gigahertz to you know 50, 60 gigahertz and beyond. So uh, 5G is actually very flexible and uh, it can work in many of, any of these frequency ranges. Uh, I hope that answers the question. Uh, Somebody said, I saw 1G in Star Trek movie. Yes, uh, uh, we can talk offline on that. I like Star Trek a lot. In fact, we're watching Star Trek as we, you know, uh, currency is at this moment. Uh, so then the next question. Uh, okay. Okay. Okay, does the frequency of 5G could impact? Okay, this we already discussed. Are there any disadvantages related to, I think we discussed that as well. 
uh, if we're working on making our algorithms faster because to avoid the latency in the network. Uh, yes, I, I think. Um, uh, Nitin, if you don't mind, can you read that question for all of us? Okay, uh, sure. Yeah, I think that. Uh, yeah. So the question is, I wonder if we were working on making our algorithm faster because to avoid the latency in the network. Now we don't have to worry about that since the network is fast enough and we can use any algorithm. What is your perspective on it? Okay. I think uh, I think it's a pretty uh, generic question. Uh, I, it depends on what algorithms we are talking about, right? For example, uh, let me take an example of telemedicine. Uh, the promise that 5G uh, uh, or, or the requirements that are set by uh, IMT for 5G latencies is somewhere between 20 milliseconds from end to end and then one millisecond between the, the tower and the UN, things like that. Right. So what we are talking about is that, you know, um, uh, the uh, the network, the time taken by the network to communicate your data data packet from one UE to the other UE is is defined by the 5G requirement. So we will meet that. Now, your algorithm might be doing multiple things. Right. So if you're if you're, uh, uh, I'm sure, I'm sure your algorithm, if it is used for, let's say, telemedicine, will certainly benefit from uh, this reduced network latency. But I'm sure your network, would, your algorithm would have a lot more other areas where the uh, latency is coming in or the slowness is coming from. So, of course, from for for all those, you will have to. But let's say if you're looking for a for a, 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 a low latency network, then yes, you will you will see those services. That's one thing. The other way I would say is, uh, uh, where is your algorithm being deployed? Is it deployed, getting deployed for ultra mobile broadband kind of services? Or is it getting deployed for your uh, EMTC types of services? Because remember, we saw that slicing, we didn't really go deeper into it, but you see these three fundamental features. And you imagine that the way network will configure a UE and the services for it will be through different slices, right? So you would tell that, okay, I am uh, this particular UE or needs this uh, service. So you will have those parameters configured for you for that slice. So the net, you know, network knows that this is your uh, quality of service requirements. Uh, you may not be able to get everything for everything, right? Which means you cannot have uh, 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 ultra reliability uh, or you cannot have a EMTC service with, an, with a huge fast data download speed, right? That may need a different way of configuring the network. So the point I'm trying to highlight is this. One, the way the network will be used will determine uh, uh, you know, uh, what latency you will get. And hence your algorithm should be able to adapt, you know, all these different configurations and stuff like that. So there's no one answer. You, you cannot expect that, you know, every, every communication on 5G network will low latency. So these are all competing requirements. You, 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 if you have a very powerful engine in the car, it will consume more fuel, right? That's the trade-off we see in the automobile world. So likewise, you'll see a lot of trade-offs between how you would like to deploy your services. So uh, uh, answer is yes, you may not need to worry about optimization if your, if your algorithm is, is looking at just, remember it's only about network latency which is getting reduced. The software running at UV or the other end will do a lot more other things which might still be slower, okay. So I guess let's move to the next. Hopefully I answered it. If not, then I know uh, we can do it over email or, or uh, offline as well. Okay. Um, we have seen as evolution of data from 2G, 3G, 4G, the cost has been reduced. Yes, we are looking for data availability for free in future. If in case someone is a data provider, what will be the source of revenue? Pretty good question. And I think this is more uh, uh, of a business question rather than a technical question, right? Because the the pricing and uh, how the services are offered to the consumers are basically uh, a business decision, right? Uh, yes, you you are seeing a lot of models in which um, the uh, something is offered for free, right? But then when something is offered for free, it means you pay 
uh, for those services in a very different way, right? Uh, Google, for example, offers you, uh, you know, uh, all these services for free, like maps, pretty useful services, right? Clouds and all. But at, at the same time, what you, what you are selling to them or how you are paying to back to Google is through your data usage and all that knowledge that is very, very valuable in, in today's world, which it is it's all data driven, AI, ML and all that. So Google is, you're paying much more actually, rather than uh, what, what you would like to pay. Right. Uh, likewise, you know, you have some uh, uh, pricing models which, uh, where you know, Airtel says, no, I want to, you know, ensure that my service quality is best, data download speed is best, and all that. But I'll charge for it. On the other hand, uh, you other operators might say that, no, no, I'll give everything for free, but then I will probably uh, charge it through my other services. So it all depends. It's a business decision. So uh, different uh, models will evolve. And, uh, you know, you will see that uh, U.S. has a very, U.S. industry has a very different model wherein you just buy in bulk and you say, okay, I, I buy this plan and then uh, you get the phone for free, right? Versus in India, you pay for a very basic phone, but you get data for, for free. So it's a, it's a business decision. I think, I think uh, uh, I'll leave it at, at that point uh, for now. Uh, what may be the future of 5G? Will it be served to all? And I think, yes, I, I think today uh, uh, you you can see how 4G is being used by everybody, right? I think right from a person who is uh, selling a tea uh, to, uh, you know, any any other person you can you can think of in the world is using it, right? I mean, uh, you will be sub, you will be very in much interested to see how the models evolve, right? For example, a few years ago, I went to my hometown and I was at, sitting at my cousin's uh, shop and all he did was he he made two missed calls and you know suddenly i saw two cup of tea arriving right so nobody the technologists never thought about that business model but uh, it's being used so my answer is that yes whether you know it or not whether you like it or not you know it it is getting disrupted and uh, uh, right now with covid situation you will be surprised to see that school uh, government school students who does not have you know a lot of basic amenities are, are actually now learning through the uh, his device and all. So I'll be very surprised if, you know, if it doesn't reach us to everyone. Um, okay. Um, what about the radius it covers compared to 4G? Uh, okay. Uh, see the, the uh, it's a pretty interesting question. And, and so one of the goals of EMTC is actually about the range, right? Uh, uh, the the requirements for uh, EMTC is actually deep uh, coverage or deep penetration, what we call it, which means that you know you your signal should be able to reach uh, a very uh, to a very wide area. Imagine it being deployed in a village wherein you have only one tower but a, a huge land space, and you know, your 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 UE is is deployed in a in a field uh, very remotely, right? So you should be able to communicate or in, in a city scenario wherein your uh, sensors are deployed deep in the basement uh, today where there are no signal goes in, right? But um, if you're talking about smart cities, you might need sensors communicating uh, data from such places, uh, right? You might look at uh, mining or you might look at, uh, you know, various other places from where today until 4G, the wireless signals don't go, but you are expected to have uh, uh, those EMTC devices communicate. So if you configure your service in such a way, then, it will basically uh, 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 adapt it to ensure that you know the range goes high. Versus, if you are if you configure your services in a way that you know you you need fast data and all that, then the range might be low. And and you know so the the beauty of 5G is that it is 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 highly configurable network, right? And and depending on use cases, deployment scenarios, and all, it can it can be configured in a way which is best suited for those kind of services. Um, how come the 5G is more encrypted compared to 3G and 4G so that an intruder cannot capture packets and decrypt it, uh, which can lead to information disclosure? Okay, now uh, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. I, you know, uh, I, uh, students, thank you so much. I want to appreciate uh, Nitin's time here. So we will limit to the next one or two questions which Nitin thinks is appropriate. And uh, any questions immediately followed by this. I will publish uh, uh, ED and your access on uh, Smart Portal where you can share your questions and uh, you can all take a questionnaire, uh, you know, based on today's webinar. 
uh, you know, which will be published by tomorrow morning. And uh, based on your uh, responses, you will be eligible for, uh, you know, uh, an e certificate as well as mentioned earlier. But, uh, you know, um, we would like to appreciate Nitin's time and we will limit it to the next one or two minutes. Uh, thank you, Nitin. Please go ahead. Sure. Uh, um, so, I guess all, all these are interesting questions. So, maybe I'll just follow the sequence the way they are coming in. Uh, there's a question on encryption about 5G being more encrypted and, uh, uh, you know, uh, it says how come the 5G is more encrypted compared to 3G and 4G so that the intruder cannot capture packets and decrypt it, which can lead to information disclosure. So I would say uh, security has been always been a main uh, issue and uh, with more services getting on board, the kind of devices that are coming on board, the challenge has become multifold. Right until final, we'll assume that the that it will be a smartphone kind of a, a entity, and and later part of the 4G, when other devices started coming on board, like your your medical devices and things like that, you know the complexity started increasing. But 5G is is, is the range, the scale is shut. basically any kind of you can think of will be possible on 5G network, right? So this brings in a huge challenge on the security. And uh, I think it's a topic by itself and you know uh, needs a, a, a huge amount of time to discuss this, but um, you would see that the security will be multi-level security. You are talking about in terms of who be connected to the network. That's one level of security. Uh, how devices can be authenticated to the network, right? So that's one level of security. Then the other level is once the device is authenticated, then the communication between the UE and a particular entity of the network, how is that secure? So that's another level. Then you're talking about end-to-end -end security from one UE to another, that's whole application level security and all that. So it's not one security mechanism. I think uh, depending on what communication we are talking about, you will see various security models evolve. Uh, for, 4G was introduced, 3G is getting obsolete with 4, 5G introduction, how hard it, so I would say uh, uh, this is again a business decision and uh, you know an operator's decision how they want to move and migrate their uh, consumers. We still see 2G services being offered um, you know in the 5G world but you know I, I think uh, this is more like market dynamics and business dynamics uh, not so much uh, from the technology point of view. Uh, for an operator, it, it makes sense if it doesn't have to ma manage multiple networks and if everybody is on the same network. So, but then the costing, the you know the deployment scenarios and challenges they will actually bring in uh, this one. Uh, a lot of those challenges. Okay, so two questions are done. So, uh, uh, Indian. So, I think uh, uh, if you want, I can take one or two more. But if you think we, uh, I think we can probably wrap up. No, Nathan, I think uh, you've been kind enough, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, I just, just to uh, tell all the students, uh, see, Nathan is somebody who uh, handles a very, very large uh, responsibility at Qual Qualcomm and uh, I know his personally, I know how much his uh, time is precious and um, Nathan, first of all, I want to take this opportunity once again on behalf of all the students here. We have students from uh, six, seven different colleges uh, and uh, uh, the one common factor is that uh, the eagerness to learn and move on. And uh, uh, so, uh, you know, first of all, if you've been on this call, uh, you know, congratulations for uh, being part of an, uh, um, you know, uh, webinar which which will take you to the you know future technologies. And Nathan, once again, thank you so much for taking time off uh, and sharing uh, so much of the wisdom and uh, your uh, knowledge about you know uh, what's ahead of you know so in store for all of us. Yeah, I really appreciate this. Thank you and Thank hope you it's guys. useful hope and it'll be good to get some feedback on what uh, was good and what uh, else uh, students might want to hear about. Absolutely, uh, we'll coordinate that. Yeah. Okay. Right. Thank you Thank so you. much. Have a wonderful evening, everyone. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>